Hello everybody, this is a prototype Swerf design we'll be trying for the 2015 preseason and hopefully if everything works we'll be using it uh, next year. So let me just give you a quick overview and then I'll start going into details. Now the whole point of this design is, well, mainly to be Swerve. It's looking not only Swerve but improvement over the other designs is the sim is actually not part of the rotating assembly so that means no rotating wires, we don't need slip rings, there's no binding. Pretty much the way I've designed this is to eliminate pretty much all the typical issues associated with Swerve. Now let me start going over some of the details. Now, one of the nicest things about this specific design is actually a two-speed Swerve. One ratio, we have about an 8 to 1, and our second speed is around a 16 to 1. So, when we need power, we'll be able to push other bots around along with also having quite high speed. So let me just do a bottom view real quick. Seems a little bit laggy due to my uh, screen recording software. No, this view is fine. All right, so uh, as you can see from the bottom, the way the shifting is done, we have a sim and there's a little pivot this little triangle is a pivot point and it pivots around this axis right here. And when it pivots one way, it engages a 20 tooth uh, spur with the 14 tooth on the sim. And then the other way, we have a 40 tooth spur that engages with the sim. So the difference between these two, and this is where our 2 to 1 ratio comes from, is a 20 tooth to 14 and a 40 tooth to 14. And then these are actually clustered. I can zoom in real quick. As you can see, this one is a 40 to 20 tooth cluster, and the other side is just a 20 20 tooth cluster, which goes to this 40 to 14 cluster. Get a better view. As you can see here, there's a 40 to 14, and there's a 30 tooth idler, and then a 40 tooth drive, which is attached to this bevel. This bevel is attached to the other bevel, which is actually technically a miter 1 to 1 ratio and then through sprockets it goes down to the wheel. Oh, it's a little bit crazy here. Let me see if I can actually get something on a decent view. No, this might be a good enough view. As you can see in a second, <laughs> All right, this might be good enough. As you see, this is a 30-tooth idler, which is hooked up to this spur. And then this spur has a bearing in it, and it's attached to this miter. So these two are attached together, but the shaft is independent, independent of them. Now, the shaft goes up to the top, and it's actually attached to this shoe. So turning the shaft actually turns the wheel, and then turning this coupling will actually turn the wheel. As you can see, it goes through this 1 to 1 miter ratio, and then the side goes to a 1 to 1 sprocket ratio. And that's what you see on this blue. Now, because we're using chain, it tends to get play in it. So part of the design is a built-in chain tensioner, which is this thing right here, just two quarter inch bearings with a quarter inch bolt, and there's a slot on this channel. So as chain gets looser, we can loosen this up, tension it, tighten it, and it should be good enough for a match or two. So with this design, we could adjust the chain tension as need be. And then as we were saying is that the whole advantage of this is to be two-speed, swerve, and be able to get, well, few issues in regards to wire bindings and whatnot, and connectors. So you see the sim is stationary to the chassis, and the steering motor is stationary to the chassis and then everything is done through gearing now this may seem like it would weigh a ton and depending what materials you use that very well may be the case but there's also quite a bit of room for improvement for example this U where we mount the wheel to it doesn't have to be this bulky or this much material you can actually drill it out and reduce weights in other ways and up here this doesn't all have to be solid aluminum this could be square tubing etc etc so this is pretty much the design 
for steering. This is kind of arbitrary for now, it's not even mounted. But as you can see, we're using a bag with a 50 to 1 worm drive, which goes directly to the wheel. This may or may not be enough, we're not sure, but this is just preliminary rough designs. Another option would be just to take a Bainbot's transmission and either stick it directly vertically on here or gear that with some spurs as well to give us a bigger ratio and just the geometry. Now leaving the tops open like this is intentional because what we can do is attach sensors very easily. As you can see this use attach this half inch shaft and right on the top I don't have a bracket here but with this very simple bracket you could attach a 360 degree sensor on there so you'll detect the position of every single wheel and you could even detect the speed if you want by either a gear tooth sensor or off pretty much any of these axles which are attached to the spur gears down there so if you want to detect speed you can very easily you could detect position very easily and overall when you combine everything together I don't really think it should weigh that much it does seem like quite a few parts and it does seem quite complicated but in reality it's not really that hard there's only a few critical holes and otherwise everything else is not that critical for example on the CU this might seem like a lot of machining but it's a lot of non critical machining the only real critical thing is to get the hole for the vertical shaft and the hole for the bearings which support which support the southern bevel so the smiter spacing is correct as long as that spacing is correct everything else is pretty much non critical I mean ideally you want the uh, wheel bearing holes to be <laughs> pretty close but again there's there's enough margin there where because it's going through chain you don't really have to screw around too much with that type of spacing so in regards to the U that's pretty simple as long as you can drill two holes relatively precisely that's pretty easy to make and then even on the top this is just a one by one inch piece of aluminum I'm not sure how long it is but again, there's only a few critical holes here. The sim mounting holes aren't that critical because the way this engagement works, it already pivots and it engages with a piston. So again, the spacing is not that critical in the sim. Now, however, there are three critical holes, which is the one that the V-plate pivots around, this idler, and this one. So these three holes are critical. And as long as you can put these three holes in the right spot, again, this relatively seemingly complicated part is actually <laughs> quite simple. So it's just a few precisionally placed holes and otherwise this whole thing should come together pretty easily. Now, most of this stuff is just pretty standard pitch. Let me go back to the bottom. The last part which will take a little bit of machining would be this, this V plate. But again this is a relatively simple part. It doesn't have to be this fancy. All you have to do here is be able to drill three holes in relatively precise spots. So this axle, that axle, and this pivot point. As long as you can drill those three holes, you can make the square or whatever. But the whole point is that it's just maybe six precision holes in this whole design. And this whole thing should go, go together relatively easily. And it should work quite well. Now. Obviously, no, we're not making everything out of steel, because if we did, it would be too heavy. We're using pl different plastic materials where we can, and then whatever breaks we'll replace with either aluminum, bronze, or worst case steel. For example, these miter gears, because they're on a pretty high, <clears throat> they're pretty high down the chain in regards to uh, the ratio, they're not going to be turning too fast, but they will have quite a bit of force on them, so plastic probably wouldn't work for those. We could, I mean, we'll try it. We'll try aluminum. And then worst case scenario, we could just put steel ones on here. The only real concern that I could see with this design so far is the connection between this vertical shaft to the top of this block and the material left on this block because there's actually a cutout here for this miter gear. Now, what we were thinking is you steel shaft into an aluminum block, and this is about half an inch material. So worst case, if this if this starts gouging out the hole, then what we can do is increase the height of this block. So right now it's half an inch. We could easily make this about three quarters of an inch, maybe a little bit more, and start playing with some geometry to get more material here in regards to the height, in regards to mounting to that middle hole. And then the other concern is, as you can see in this block, where this matter goes, there's a slot cut out where it protrudes out the top. 
that means on either end there's only about half an inch of material so half an inch by half an inch on either side now with enough fatigue and force that might break but as we mentioned we could actually reinforce this where if it is an issue we can fix it as you can see there's extra vertical height profile here so it could probably go up another half an inch or three quarters of an inch up and then further down so we have more surface area to keep this piece together but that's pretty much it let us know your thoughts if you guys like it if you guys don't and if you have any ideas yourself feel free to try it but uh, yeah hopefully this will work and <laughs> We're still waiting a couple of weeks for some more parts because some of these parts <laughs> take a while to get. We'll be machining soon, but hopefully we'll have updates soon. Thank you for watching.